Hey, so here we are in Pioneer Square. Uh, you know, lots of brick buildings and of course, lots of rats. But I want to tell you a story, a short story. I'll make it very brief. I know long stories can be like tiresome. So I want to tell you, I used to live here. Uh, it's not really a place you're supposed to live. It used to be uh, a beauty school, right? You'd go into the basement, you'd go to this gate here, walk down these steps, make a right, and there was a beauty school. And they transformed this, we transformed this beauty school into our place to live, right? We were all young, you know, our 20s, you know, poor, that sort of thing. I've written about this before. But the really crazy thing I want to point out, sorry, I just thought, I saw something moving over there. I'm, I'm always nervous in, when I'm in the alley, you know, I mean, ah. okay, so when I was living here uh, with my friends being poor and that sort of thing, um, one, one, we had a kitchen that was really in the middle, that's near this door, right over here. And what happened is there was this rat that would eat through the wall and get to our kitchen. And it drove us bonkers. We did not know what to do about it. We tried to cover the hole it made with a block of wood. And, you know, the rat ate through that and got to the kitchen. And we were distressed. And, you know, it was huge. It was a huge rat. I mean, yeah, you know, when people say huge rat, right? You know what I mean? It's huge. Right. So you got to imagine what was happening here is we were we had no we had no money. So we couldn't afford to buy a rat trap. Right. But for some bizarre reason, somebody who lived with us had a bear trap. So I said, maybe it'll work. You know, maybe I set up this bear trap and uh, and we see, you know, what happens the next the next morning. So um, I went into uh, the kitchen and pulled the bear trap. It's a huge thing. It didn't have any teeth. It was not supposed to kill anything. It was meant to hold the bear or whatever, you know, from running away from you, you know, maybe injured you know, maybe it injured it or something. So I pulled this huge trap apart and I said, ah, now I remember you need to have a um, bait. So I found a big chunk of cheese and I put it on this big middle of this trap. You know, and I thought, well, I mean, it may work, right? And uh, left it there at night. Uh, sure enough, the rat fell for it. It wasn't just a big rat, it was a dumb rat. It fell for a bear trap. I mean, people have mouse traps all over and they catch nothing. I put up a bear trap and I get a whole rat. And I, you know, and it was just like, I don't know, this was something about the rats in Pioneer Square, if their IQs are low or something. This may be true. I cannot verify this. It's, you know, I'm not doing scientific research here. But I can tell you this rat was stupid. And the bear trap caught it. And it fell for the cheese. I saw that in cartoons. And it worked. So anyway, the point is, this uh, rat was like uh, uh, still alive. And uh, because, it, you know, the, the trap didn't have teeth. So, you know, we had to, I can't tell you how we killed it. It's a long story. And we were young and, you know, the, I want to preserve some of the innocence. But just let's think about it right now, you know, about the, the, the last moments of that rat in this place I used to live, you know, trying to get that cheese in a bear trap. Yeah, so here we are. Um, we are, you know, we're passing um, the Yeslo Terrace homes, they're all empty now. They used to be filled with life, uh, mostly immigrants. Um, um, all of this is going to be gone in a few years and um, a bunch of new buildings with um, people who have money and people who don't will be living here. Um, but you, you must remember this area, which is near Little Saigon, um, which is on 12th and Jackson, is um, was also you know had a lot of you know a lot of uh, how do you put it rats <laughs> and um, <laughs> and uh, you could see them at dusk right now here's the thing I, I want you to think about you know everybody sort of like you know before the asteroid hit the earth right you know all of us mammals we were about the size of rats you know that's what we were we were really small and. Um, 
we couldn't, you know, we didn't have a chance to get some dinosaurs. And so we, we only came out at night, you know, um, when the dinosaurs were asleep or, you know, couldn't see us. And then suddenly, you know, we could, had a chance. You know, we scurried around, you know, and so forth and so on. And, uh, and of course, a comet or a, a meteorite or whatever slammed into the earth and dispatched that whole collection of bigness Arriving into the big emptiness Washington. that is all around us. But anyway, that's where they went. They became Central nothing. District. They all were wiped out. And, uh, uh, and, and we, as mammals, got our break. We got our chance. And um, we left the night. That's right. We were able to, like, you know, step out into the day, right? And now look at us. We are the kings of the afternoon, the queens of the morning. We are the dinosaurs to the rats. The rats come out when the sun is setting, right? And uh, that's the that's the that's the big change that happens, you know, in what they call eons or you know the, the the long durée, the long period. So the rats are are sort of like what we were. You know, millions upon millions ago, you know? you know, they don't, you don't see them really during the day. And if you do, you know, it's probably going to be at Carl Anderson Park where they are very, you know, bold and come out in the middle of the day. You know, but I'm not kidding you. Uh, you, if you. If you walk up and down the streets, you will meet the most open, the most bold, the most ratty rats possible. Um, this is uh, a backyard in Columbia City. Uh, I'm being mysterious here. It's my backyard, okay? So let's end the mystery. This is where I live. And I brought you here because um, the tree behind me, you know, that tree where you may see the orange flags and behind it, it's uh, denuded right now. It's one of those trees that says no leaves, you know, during the winter. I've decided to store my energy. Maybe we can say it's sleeping. And if we believe that trees have minds, then we can say maybe it's kind of like, you know, having the dreams of a tree, right? The dreams of what it was like when that, you know, bird pecked at you and so forth. And so forth. This, is, this is a sleeping tree or something like that. But I don't want to get into this. I don't want to get into all that. I want to tell you why I brought you here to look at this particular tree that has no leaves. This, this uh, denuded tree. There's one fruit left on it. Who knows how white they did for so long. You know, the, the, the fruit that wants to, that, that just refuses to accept that it has to fall. You know, we all, we all have somebody in our lives like that. So, I want to just tell you that I bring you here because, you know, I can remember this very well. It was in 2001. I was sitting at the spot, not far from where this camera is. Actually, it's a little bit ahead of, of this camera. And I'm talking to my mother, my, the person who brought me into this world, right? That sort of thing, you know? The one who I've complicated dreams with and, or dreams about and things like that. My mother, right? We all have mothers, I think. And um, anyway, I'm having this situation here, talking to my mother, and I notice my cat, this cat who lives here. I don't give my cat's name because a cat and giving it a name seems ridiculous so the cat is looking at this tree and the trees behind my mother I'm sort of sitting in front of my mother talking to her about you know things that sons talk about their mothers oh that's wrong oh that's bad so you know um, I'm looking at this tree I look at the cat first and then I look at the tree and then uh, I see it's packed with rats it's all rats all over the branches here rats running up and down the branches and it just spooks me, you know? It just terrifies me. And I just can't believe it. And my mother looks at me and she sees the horror on my face. What are you looking at and why are you looking like that? And you know, of course, humans are the kind of animals that say, why are you so upset? I can see it in your face. And then my mother turns around and she sees the rats too running up and down that tree. It was a tribe of rats, little rats, big rats. You know, when you ever see rats, they come in different sizes, you know, the little ones and the small ones. I don't know how they get along, but they seem to come in different sizes. And there were small ones and big ones and really, really big ones and up and down this tree. And the weird thing is, 
the weird thing is, and I'm not a superstitious person, I'm a man of science, I believe in science, you know? I believe that everything has a rational, has a rational explanation, it's cause and effect, all this kind of thing. But I couldn't help it. I was watching these rats, you know, in a tree that's behind my mother. And a month later, or not a month, I won't be so dramatic, you know, I'm a filmmaker too, so I get dramatic. A year later, she was dead. And I couldn't help thinking that the omen of her death was those rats in that tree.